to my shop. I'm Barbara Gill, and I turn things on many axes. Uh, in April, I posted a video of a simple multi-axis spindle that has two parallel axes on either side of the center axis, so they're 180 degrees apart. The axes are on the outside because it's arc type, and you don't need a lot of solid wood there. And a simple design uh, was turned on each axis. So I thought I'd go ahead and post another video with that very same idea, but on a twisted axis. So this is the very same form <clears throat> made on axes that twist at 90 degrees. So I set it up by drawing an axis through the center axis and then 190 degrees to that. And I numbered them one, two, three, and four on each end, one to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. And then on the headstock, I would put in number one, and on the tail stock, number two. So I twisted it at 90 degrees. The next axis I used was three to four, making that axis just behind the first axis. So I've done a short video, this is what you're gonna see, and I will in the future go ahead and discuss quadrants three and four. This is in quadrant one, which are parallel axes and arc type. This is in quadrant two, which are parallel, I mean, twisted axes and arc type. And the three and four, they're circular, parallel and circular twisted. So enjoy this. So the first thing I do is take a rectangular piece of wood. I love green wood, cut it on the bandsaw, find the center. I use the plastic from the tops of yogurt containers. I can find angles easily that way. I'll mount it on the lathe and I'll make, turn it into a cylinder using my bowl gouge. Then I'll use a magic marker so I can see my lines and I'll mark about a half inch from each end so I can make notes to myself and see where the axes are. <clears throat> On this one, I've made axes that go through the center axis and are at 90 degrees to each other. I mark on the top and the bottom, one to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. When I'm doing parallel axis, I go one to one, but this is twisted, so I'm going one to two, one on the headstock, two on the tailstock, and I'm going to turn this form, but I usually start with the coves, which are on the bottom. It just it seems easier to me to start with the coves on each end and then blend a bead in in the middle. Speed is important. This speed isn't that fast, so it's going to bounce just a little bit. But the faster it goes, the smoother the cut, the less time between the air and the wood that you're hitting with your tool. So these are interrupted cuts. So you have to have good control with your tool, have um, sharp tools, use the bevel, make sure you're slicing the wood, go downhill when you're making coves so you're not going against the grain. You can see the air wood and the solid wood. And the depth of cut is an important aspect. I usually, um, I, it's, there's no right or wrong answer. I could have gone a lot deeper on this first axis, uh, but I'm looking at the solid wood and I usually go deeply enough to just about touch that solid wood. It wouldn't matter if I went so deep that I went into the solid wood because when I change the axis, it will turn into arcs intersecting, parallels intersecting with each other. I mean, profiles intersecting with each other. I think it becomes more dramatic uh, when you cut more deeply. I'm just taking my time to refine the cove and the bead and the cove. And that's what the first profile looks. That's from axis one to two. Now I've got it on three to four. That means it'll be just behind the axis that I just turned. 
and I've marked on it that I'm going to turn the cove in the middle and the beads on the outside. I do that because sometimes you can't really see from looking at this. You get a little confused about what you're actually doing. I stop and start the lathe a lot so I can see what I'm doing, but I also uh, will mark on the wood what I need to be thinking about. I'm making a bead cut to define the bead. I stop it and start it a lot just to make sure it's in the right position and it's going on the outside of that cove. I can go more deeply because there's a flat spot. So I know I can take more wood off of that because I want these axes to intersect with a, with a nice line with no flat spots on it. Now I'm blending that bead into the cove in the middle. Stop once again. I can see the flat spots. I can take out more wood. I usually don't go back to the first axis, but I can because this isn't that fragile. I usually try to know what my depth of cut will be and know what I'm aiming for. Um, but there's nothing wrong with going back to the first axis and making those cuts a little deeper as well. Now those are intersecting with that nice line. And now I'm going to go ahead and create the bead on the tailstock end with my spindle gouge. I use my bowl gouge for smoother, longer cuts, but the spindle gouge is perfect for bead cuts and rolling beads into them. Talking about tools, I believe there's no right or wrong tool. These are just my favorite tools that I've been using through the years. Whatever tool works for you to make beads and coves and bead cuts on spindles is the right tool to use. Mm, very good, except there's a little flat spot right there. So I'll take some more wood off of that. And there they are, two similar forms, one on parallel axes and the other one on twisted axes. So now that you understand how this works, you can start being more playful using profile elements, using multiple axes, whether they're parallel or twisted. Um, the axes can be closer to the outside since it's arc shape. Uh, they don't have to be spaced equally like 90 or 120 degrees. One axis can be at the top, many at the bottom. There's so many variables, the size and the shape of the wood, if it's fat and short or long and slender. All of these can be played with so that you can find your own voice and create wonderful and fun things doing multi-axis spindles. I'm sure you've heard people say, oh, I don't have a creative bone in my body. Creativity is a muscle, and the muscle needs to be exercised. So enjoy playing with these and experimenting and exercising that muscle.